built automation systems for insect farming. Now, believe it or not, when I was a little girl, I had no clue that I was going to grow up to be an insect farmer. My background is in software and data analysis. In 2015, I sold my first company to Tableau. And after that, I had a team of engineers that I managed in Silicon Valley for a couple of years until I decided to stop squashing bugs and grow them instead. But even before that, i had been researching insect protein as a side interest, partly because I'm a nerd and partly because we're facing a huge global protein shortage and insects are a great way to convert cheap byproducts into protein that we can feed to pit, fish, poultry, and pets. Now, in 2017, I really wasn't quite sure how to get started in this insect space, so I did what anyone would do, and I built an overly elaborate art project called the Entomophotron. It's a 1950s style diner and edible insect experience station that we took to half a dozen events around the country. We hired entomologists and professional actors to present a menu of interactive edible insect experiences that we used to teach about entomology and strike up conversations about bugs. Here we are at the Dutchess County Fair, presenting our chef special to a robot. Turns out that robots don't like eating insects, who knew? We also had live cockroach races with Madagascar hissing cockroaches. We narrated with a hot pink megaphone. Tyrone the Terrible was our reigning champion. Roach had a thirst for victory. Scarlet loves Tyrone. Now, at the same time that I was making the Entomophotron, I was also a visiting scientist at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, where I worked with entomologists and did deep research into the insect protein space. And what I learned from talking with people all over the country and working with these scientists is that there are a lot of misunderstandings around how insect protein fits into our agricultural landscape. So today, I want to share some information with you about our six-legged friends and how they can help. So guys, we have a really big problem. There's not enough protein. Agricultural, agriculture already uses a huge share of resources to produce food for people. It's important, but we're already using 24, agriculture has about 24% of greenhouse gas <coughs> emissions. It uses about 37% of uh, ice-free land and it accounts for about 70% of our freshwater resources. In addition, shifting weather patterns are expected to reduce agricultural output on average per acre of land. And in 30 years, the Global Resources Institute predicts that these will fall short of making enough food